Uh, my name is James Wolfe. I'm a member of Winnipeg Police Cause Harm. I'd just like to uh, note that uh, today is International Day, Day Against Police Brutality. Uh, there is a rally being held outside as we speak, uh, including the families of Elias Whitehead, James Wood, Sean Thompson, all who have been killed by Winnipeg Police in the last uh, several years. So I'm here today to oppose the additional $31 million in mill rate support to the WPS between 2023 and 2027, reaching $312 million per year in 2027. This includes in 2025, an $11.7 million increase. In 2026, a $14.1 million increase. In 2027, a $7.8 million increase. This is all happening at the same time as council is underfunded or defunded altogether essential life sustaining services, such as the community connection space at Millennium Library, which I'll remind council costs $600,000 a year to operate. These cuts are being justified on the basis of having to make quote unquote tough decisions, yet such decisions are never imposed upon the police. In 2022, almost 1,300 WPS employees made more than $100,000 a year. Compare that to 60 for Winnipeg Transit and 23 for all of community services. In total, 52 of the 100 highest paid city employees were police officers. In contrast, the departments of community services and public transit only had one employee each in the top 100. A cop starts making a six-figure salary after only five years on the job, seeing an 80% pay rise in that period alone. So this flies in the face of all available evidence about what actually improves safety, but it also flies in the face of what council claims about fiscal responsibility and having to make tough decisions. If police actually kept people safe, Winnipeg would be one of the safest cities in the world. Uh, but we know uh, that it is not, and police remind us of this constantly. Uh, what we do know actually keeps people safe is things like public housing, things like safe consumption sites, uh, with more than 400 people in Manitoba dying in 2022 alone due to the drug poisoning crisis, yet there isn't a single safe consumption site in the city. Uh, we need non-police crisis response as advocated for by the Police Accountability Coalition uh, and many other things. Um, so I'm here today to argue that council can and should slash the police budget, require the police board and WPS to administer layoffs, an overtime ban and attrition. As the police board itself notes, council, quote, may choose to increase investment in the service, use investment in other areas to promote public safety, or balance the funding needs of the Winnipeg Police Service with municipal budget constraints. I would say that that is exactly what is being faced today in terms of decisions. The idea of giving the Winnipeg Police, which is already by far the highest funded department in the city, an additional $31 million over the next four years is absolutely egregious given the state of underfunding of many other city services and it is, uh, it's just uh, egregious and needs to be opposed, which is what I'm here to do today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Will. Appreciate your presentation today. Thank you. Any questions at all? Sure. Councilor Bawadi? Nothing would make me happier than to be able to cut the police budget, but the reality is more often we hear from police that are frustrated that the same offenders keep reoffending. Would you support more incarceration so that people who have you know, repeated run-ins with the law are off the streets and again, we could... Abs absolutely not. Your, your question is an indictment of policing and criminalization as a response to many deep-seated social issues such as, such as poverty, lack of investments of, in housing, lack of safe consumption sites, lack of mental health supports, all these sorts of things. And we know that criminalization greatly worsens all of these issues. So someone goes into jail, prison, remand center, and they come out and they have even less access to housing. They have even less access to education, to community supports. So what we're doing is we're actively undermining the situations of people who are already in dire straits already. And so I think it's the exact opposite of what we should be doing. Instead of investing more and more into police and criminalization, we should be funding the actual things that we know reduce people's need and a susceptibility and vulnerability to situations which could result in violence. As we saw just yesterday, uh, these situations where at-risk youth are being involved in really atrocious violence. This is a clear indictment that the current, the current funding strategy is not working, and the idea that putting them behind bars at the age of 14, 15, 16, and that they're gonna come out and somehow be better than they were, is it completely flies in the face of all available evidence. What this is doing is entrenching cycles of incarceration, and it's setting a future for them, uh, which ultimately leads to no other uh, alternative, so. Thank you. Councilor Mays? 
Uh, during my unhappy tenure on the police board, you were one of the more eloquent and less abusive people who would show up in delegation, which I always appreciated. Is there any, leaving aside the large, is there any smaller, I mean, you, you've spoken eloquently here, which I, I would expect of you, but is there any sort of smaller targeted thing you would want us to do? I mean, that's, you know, you, 31 million is a big hit, obviously, but is there something more focused you, you, you can you, you might want to speak to? Uh, I mean, salaries, benefits, pensions are, are the big, uh, they're the big number. And so, so long as those continue to grow year after year, we're going to continue to see escalating costs. So, you know, $31 million, and this is $31 million in annual mill rate support. So this is every single year in the future. It's going to be a, above $300 million that the city is now spending on police. And so this is the reality that council has to acknowledge. And I know that there has have apparently been efforts to study this issue in the past. A uh, report was requested of city admin. It was never produced about the sustainability of police funding. And so we've just kind of accepted this idea that we will just have runaway police salaries, benefits, pensions. I know that we recently had the pension overhaul, which was the result of a third party arbitrator, so to speak. Uh, but well, ish. <laughs> it, it, I know that the last attempt to uh, revisit that did not end too well. Uh, but the reality is that, you know, so long as someone can make six figures after five years uh, and the police are going to continue hiring at that particular rate, there's, there's no way that we can get around this. Uh, and so you ask about small things like, sure, I could talk about the helicopter or the robot dog or whatever, but at the end of the day, this is about salaries and benefits. And taking the money that's currently being invested in this reactive approach to uh, violence and harm and reallocating that into things that we know actually prevent people from falling into these positions in the first place.